I'm Juliette Sear, a working mum of three whose love affair with baking started 20 years ago with some rather dodgy cake to my children's birthdays. But that was then. This is now. Baking is pretty much my life. Just be really creative. There's no right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> From celebration cakes to afternoon teas, I've tackled everything baking can throw at me. From dodgy blenders... <laughs> fighting with the uh, food processor as usual. To some seriously stubborn cake tins. It's really slippery. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. <laughs> so now it's time to share everything I've learned with you. Anything is possible. From classic comfort food to the latest trends, there's wow factor for any occasion, be it Christmas, birthdays or beyond. And if that wasn't enough, I'm baking sensational savoury dishes too. Get ready for tasty tarts, perfect pasta and lovingly handcrafted pies, plus some incredible plant-based delights too. To top it all off, I'm catching up with some of my mates and special guests who've all made their flowery mark on the world of baking. Plus, we'll hear from the experts behind some of our favourite treats and learn the secret to some pretty epic creations. So grab yourself a cuppa and get ready for some seriously beautiful baking. Today's beautiful baking is all about spices. I take good old pumpkin pie to a whole new level with cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg and a heavenly meringue topping. There's a surprise addition to these chocolate brownie cookies. I visit a Lebanese bakery and lend a hand making their signature dish. King of Spice, John Gregory Smith, serves up Mamul Mad, gooey squares of dates, cinnamon, nuts and honey. And there's a winter spiced apple and pear meringue, proving pavlova's not just for summer. So let's get baking. year there's something really warm and comforting about flavouring your food with spice and I'm kicking off with a spiced pumpkin pie but it's not just any old pumpkin pie it's covered in meringue you just want to bury your face in it I'm gonna start off with a spiced pastry it's a sweet short crust first of all some flour diced cold salted butter pop my lid on Hang on. I'm just going to give this a blitz. A couple of teaspoons of cinnamon for some spice in that pastry. So that's perfect. So next, add some sugar. I've got some light muscovado sugar here, which is going to be so full of flavour and also the pastry will be really nice and dark. Just sits really well with the cinnamon. Now, lastly, one egg yolk. And you can see it's just clumping slightly. I'm going to add a tiny bit of iced water until it just comes together. There it is. And now, just by hand, bring it together. So I've actually got enough for two pies here. So now I can pop one in the freezer and I'll chill these before rolling out. I've got these beeswax wraps here. They're really good because you can reuse them. So wrap this one up. Just going to swap this one out for one that's already chilled. It is much easier to roll it when it's chilled. It will hold its shape. And also it'll stop it from shrinking so much. That's my surface. So when I'm rolling out my pastry, I like to put the pin in the middle of the pastry and roll towards myself and then back in the centre and roll away. The reason I do this is to keep it really nice and circular. Quarter turn. And when you're doing this, just be quick and confident. Once you start unrolling, commit to the rolling and just finish it off. So I can see it's in the middle, I've got about central, 
plenty on this side. Over it goes in one motion. So I'm just going to press this over the edge. I do want it to overhang, so I'm leaving a little bit flapping over the edge. I'm going to pop it back in the fridge to chill before I blind bake it. Right, so here it is, my spice chilled pastry all ready to blind bake. First of all, I'm going to get a bit of parchment paper and I like to screw it up. Just because it's fun, but also then it sits better into the tart case. So I'm going to use some baking beans. If you don't have these, you can use dried pulses or pasta or rice. Just something to weight down that paper. It's really fun doing that. Right, that's all ready to bake. I'm going to pop it into the oven on 180 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. Then I'm going to take those beans out back into the oven to go crispy and golden. My pastry case is all ready. I've blind baked it, crisped it off, and when it came out, I brushed it with some egg whites. I do that when it's really hot because it seals it and it protects the pastry so it'll be really nice and crisp. And then lastly, I've just trimmed it off, so now it's ready for its gorgeous spiced pumpkin filling. I've got some golden caster sugar. And to that, I'm gonna add two eggs and a good slosh of vanilla. This is actually vanilla bean paste. I love this because of the intense flavour, but also when you cut through the filling, you can see those little flecks of vanilla seeds. It's gorgeous. This pumpkin pie has got four spices in it. I've got some gorgeous cinnamon, some ginger, some mixed spice and some fresh nutmeg. So in that goes. And I love nutmeg, just the fresh grating is best. Not too much, because it's quite strong. I'm using tinned pumpkin puree. I think it's perfect, because it's not too wet. So the aim of the game is to not knock out the air into here. So I'm going to very gently fold this through. So add it in little by little. And apparently pumpkin pie has been around since the 16th century, but they didn't use to use pastry. They used to put the mixture back into the pumpkin skin and bake it, which I'm sure is delicious and probably a bit healthier, but not as tasty as using a spiced pastry to encase it. The last thing is to add the evaporated milk. This is going to be such a gorgeous, rich set filling and with the spice, oh, it's delicious. Just gently tip it into the centre of the pastry. Now, as you can see, it is really, really wet, but don't worry, it will set really nicely. So that's ready to bake. It's gonna go in the oven at 140 degrees for 45 minutes until it's cooked through. Being careful. In my bain-marie, I've got some golden caster sugar and some egg whites, which I'm gently heating. So it's all about looking and feeling at this stage because I want to have a glossy meringue that's not granulated because I'm not going to bake it. So at the early stages, you can feel, lift up the whisk and I can feel the sugar between my fingertips. It's granulated and sticky. What I'm looking for is silky smooth, nice and warm. So you can see it's coming together more as one mixture. It doesn't look separated. So by dissolving the sugar, and heating that egg white, it means the meringue is going to be really delicious. It doesn't need to be baked in the oven, it can literally just be torched. I think it's there now. Final fingertip test. Turn it right up into high. So I think we're done. It is. 
Prince, look at that. Lovely stiff peaks, ready to pop onto the pie. So I'm just going to spoon it on. Look at that. There we go. I'm not knocking the air out, I'm just gently pushing it towards the edge of the pastry. So now what I'm doing is using my spoon just to lift up the meringue and allow some really nice fluffy peaky bits. I'll stop myself there. I do get carried away with my blowtorch, but I want to get that two-tone effect. I'm really happy with that. I'll just put that on here. There you go. So there you have it. Perfect winter spiced pumpkin tart. Sure to warm you from the inside out. <laughs> For this recipe, the spice comes from a bottle, not a jar. It's a gorgeous chocolate and chilli spice combo. Here they are, my amazing spiced chocolate brownie cookies. To make them, I'm going to start with dark chocolate and add some butter and melt it through together. I'm just putting this into a bain-marie over a pan of just simmering water, making sure that the bowl's not touching the water. I've got some self-raising flour and some cocoa powder. It's a really simple recipe. Be ready in a flash. Right, just check on my chocolate and butter. That's starting to melt now. So I'm just going to leave that sat there very gently while I whisk up my eggs and sugar. I've got some light muscovado sugar, one of my favourite ingredients because it's fudgy and rich. Just going to add two eggs. And what I'm looking for is for the sugar to become light, very light and creamy pale, and for a trail of ribbon to be left, so it's kind of foamy. So up it goes. And you can see it's starting to lighten straight away while the air goes in. I think we're there. So just lift it up and I can see a nice trail is left on the surface. So if you're doing that by hand, I reckon it would take you a good 10 to 15 minutes, but it is worth it when you try them. So just pop over to my chocolate, turn this off. And that's all nicely melted there. It does look very hot, but that's just the steam underneath. So it shouldn't be too hot because the butter's just melted in. I'm just going to check it to make sure. So it's a tiny bit warm. We just want it to be about body temperature. So I'm just going to stir it through just to cool it down a little bit. It looks really lovely. The silky melted chocolate with butter is one of the best things in the world. It's going to be even better with the chilli. Now, if you haven't tried chocolate and chilli before, it's not actually a new thing. It's been around for centuries, probably even longer than that, thousands of years since the Aztecs. And it is a really good combo. The silky chocolate really carries the chilli well and you get a hit just at the end. I prefer just using chilli in dark chocolate. I think that goes really well. Not so much in milk chocolate and definitely not in white for me personally. But with the dark chocolate, it is the perfect combo. Trust me, try it. If you haven't tried it before, try these. So that's cooled down nicely. In it goes. 
can see how light and airy that sugar is. It started at a really dark brown with the muscovado and now it's really, really creamy and light. Back to some more whisking. So that's ready. It's looking really thick and delicious. Now it's time for the spice. So I'm going to grab my bottle and this is a really, really spicy chilli sauce. You can add it to taste, but I like it to be a definite kick. So I'm going to use two teaspoons. I mean, I can smell how spicy it is, but trust me, with the chocolate, it is a winning combo. Time to add the cocoa and the flour. This is a hybrid. It's a cross between a cookie and a brownie, so I want to keep that air in. I don't want to over-process the flour. I don't want it to be a crispy, like, consistency. I want it to be fudgy. And again, the secret to making these really, really delicious is to slightly underbake them, so they should have a real wobble. So that's all ready. I mean, would you look at that? Luscious, spiced, dark chocolate mix. All I need to do is spoon it onto the tray. It's going to make 12. So the best way to do this is just using two spoons because it is really sticky. I'll just plop it onto the tray and you can see it's quite sort of spiky and gooey. But they will bake flat. Kind of looks like chocolate ice cream. Next row. All of the cookies ready to go into the oven. They are going to be amazing. And when you bake these, the smell in the kitchen, it's to die for. I'm going to bake them on 180 for about 10 to 12 minutes. I'll check them after about eight or nine. All ovens vary, and I really am looking for that little wobble. So do check, because no one likes an overbaked cookie. Wow. I wish you could smell these, but you will when you bake them at home. These have just come out. They're still really nice and fudgy. You can see they've got a bit of give. And you just need to leave them on the tray and they'll firm up a little bit more and then I can pop them on my plate. But I just love them so hot. So I'm gonna have a little taste now. Burning. Look at that. It's a lovely, soft, brownie texture. Mm. That is heaven. Just leave me here while I finish these off. I'll eat them all. <laughs> excited today because I've been joined by a great friend of mine, John Gregory Smith. Hi. Thanks for coming and we're going to do a bit of cooking and lots of chats and John is an incredible food and travel writer and best known for his love of spice. <laughs> Who doesn't love to spice up their life, Julia? Exactly. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. So what are you going to bake for me today? Right, I'm baking a beautiful Arabic pastry called Mammal Mad. And it's an amazing semolina pastry that you bake in the oven. So it goes beautiful, soft and crispy with a date filling. But what we're going to do is perfume it with different spices. Oh. So I've got two in store for you that you are going to love. I cannot wait. Right. What, one, what ones are you using? So this one is called Maleb. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, it's it's actually lovely. really typical in Syrian cooking, and they'll use it in sweet pastries like this, but also with meat as well. well I've never heard of it before, it's... so I knew you would be fascinating me today with your... I pulled out all the stops <laughs> for you, young lady. And then the next one is cinnamon, and oh. I just... I just love it. I love cinnamon too. It's it's smell. It smells of Christmas. It does, it does. <laughs> I just... <laughs> just inhaled cinnamon. <laughs> so that's what we're going to use. So those two are going to lift this dish. Fantastic. Taste of the Arabia right there. So where do we start? So it's a semolina base. So this is ground semolina, which is the same ingredient as you'd make a pasta from. And then this one is the fine semolina. You can see it's like texturally a lot 
Oh, it's really finer. Very fine. <laughs> yeah. And what this will do is just give you a different texture and it will absorb more of the liquid so oh. that you get a sort of softer finish. Nice. So you just shove that in, a bit of yeast, and this is just, you know, you're more of a baker than I am, this is just the fast action yeast. And that will rise and make it all lovely and fluffy. Oh, wow. A bit of sugar, because this is a sweet pastry and, like, Arabic culture love sweet things. They, they adore it. Now this is, I just love this ingredient, it's, it's rose water. I love rose water. Isn't it gorgeous? It reminds me, do you like Turkish delights? I love it. It's one of those love it or hate it ones, I love it. I love it and I, oh, I just love the smell of it. It's really evocative of like kind of, you know, like Arabic nights, hot summer nights and you have to be like kind of, you can go for it but you have to be slightly sparing I think with rose water. It's quite strong, so about two teaspoons, and it really does lend a wonderful perfume. Unfortunately, it's one of those ingredients you've got to go and seek it out, but it is worth it. So, <laughs> now we need to lux it up with a bit of butter and bind it all together. So if you just yeah. want to pour in, we've got some lovely luscious melted butter. Fantastic. I'm going to get a little spoon. So I just pour it in? You start pouring, I'm going to start mixing. So how did you come about this recipe? So this is a very classic Lebanese recipe, and I found this amazing couple in a town called Saida, which is just south of Beirut, like a beautiful old Phoenician port on the coast. And they'd been making these pastries for years, and I sort of, you know, followed the scent of the, of the, of the smells and, and basically kind of was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And uh, my limited Arabic, which is essentially two words, didn't quite cut it, and I used a translator app. And between that and uh, a lot of heavy flapping, they, I think they, they took like, pity on me, like, what's wrong with him? But let's give him the recipe and maybe he'll go away. And they gave it to me. And it was just, you know, it was one of those sort of things where you just see it and you're like, it's actually really simple, but incredible. Yeah. And what was interesting afterwards is when I told a few people about this in, in Lebanon, they were like, oh, my God, we all buy our pastries from him. So he's kind of famous. Oh, so it was wow. like, yeah, it's a good one. Oh, that's really special. Yeah, yeah. it's lovely. Mm -hmm. So this is ready, look at that. It's lovely and fluffy, and I think all we need to do now is pop that in the fridge to firm up, and while we're doing that, we can make the filling as well. Brilliant, fab. Just pop it in the fridge. So, filling. This is so wicked, this bit, I love it. So I've got dates here, and these are beautiful medjool dates, and if you like, give it a squeeze. squeeze, look at that. I do like squeezing a date. Aren't they? Yeah, no, but they're really... They're really and sticky. They smell of like caramel. They're absolutely wicked. I'm just going to chuck these into the blender. And more red, just Lovely. so it echoes that mm. flavour of the base. About a tablespoon. Yeah. And then walnuts. So walnuts have this lovely sort of like waxy creaminess that works mm. really well with the dates. And then the spice, ground cinnamon. So that goes in. And then do you want to put in a pinch of salt and pepper? Yeah. Oh, salt and pepper into that? No, it doesn't have salt and pepper. Oh, you, well, <laughs> you. <laughs> That would have been absolutely <laughs> vile. <laughs> so that's oh, I it. I don't know, do I? It's your <laughs> recipe. Very least in the salt and pepper. Um, so you just whack this on, and hopefully it's going to, like magic, go on first time. It's lucky I know you, because you can be cheeky to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember when we first met, and we met properly and had a, a most raucous night, and you're now in my phone forever as Juliet's here, BFF forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I made you do that, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, weird. But it's true. <laughs> you are, you really are. Now we text every day. So, do I just turn this on? And you know when it's ready because it will sort of almost stick into a clump. So, I'm going to just. <laughs> Look, oh, yeah, it there it goes. That's when you know it's ready. Right, brilliant. And then it, oh, it's like oh, shiny it and delicious and like just come and have a look at this. Look at it, look at it. It's quite simple really, isn't it? It's is really easy and you've just got all those lovely like perfume spices in there. Shall we go and get the pastry out of the fridge yeah. and get assembling? Yeah, assembling. let's do it. Assembling. assembling. Constructing. Constructing. Assembling. Constructing. Yeah. <laughs> That is perfect. So this has had about an hour and a half, and you can see it's really all the grains have swollen in the oh, butter yeah. and the flavour, and that is, you know, that's going to give us the best texture for this dish. Should um, help? Yes. Do you know what? So the like the, the proper way to do it, which is quite laborious, is you're meant to like oh. rub. So you're meant to do this for hours, but actually for hours. Yeah, I question this because <laughs> you actually push it quite heavily down into the tray. Do you think that's ready? Yeah, I think all the big lumps are out, so I reckon we can kind of we'll slap it in there. So look, I'm just going to scatter this into the tray. And the only reason why I'm using this tin is because you can just clip the sides out really easily. And then I'm just going to start pushing it down 
and forming the base of the pastry. So this is this is really like not technical no. baking. It's like rough and ready and really easy. It's, did you see it started to stick a little bit to yeah. my finger? If you you know that classic thing, if you just wet your hands a bit, it yes, sort of saves and then it's much easier, oh, isn't it? Bother. Let the expert take yeah, over. Yeah, go on. Thank goodness you're here. Hopefully. You're right. That does really help. Yeah. Otherwise, it just you get into a mess, yeah, don't look you? Yeah, straight away. Yeah. And sort of look. Thank God you're here to step in. <laughs> I reckon that's perfect. Good. Yeah, nice. So this is where we need that lovely date filling. So that rather glorious looking thing. Yeah. Now we'll shove that in there. Pass it over to you and then very carefully just get the last Take remnants. the blade out. Yeah, let's do that. Be safe. Oh, it's just so good. Like the smell of it as well yeah. is amazing. Grab a bit of the paste, the dates, like there. Thank you. And just flatten it out a bit, Ooh. so like that. And pop it in round the side. Well, it's quite fun, so you just it's basically really patch it nice. in like, a, like a dainty jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> dainty jigsaw puzzle, exactly. And what we want to do is get a really nice sort of even layer. Okay. And it's sort of easier to work from the sides in. Yeah, the same um, way as if you'd um, top a crumble or something, always work from the sides in. I love this, actually, because it really, like, it really sad. It is like playing Play-Doh, and I used to yeah. love Play-Doh when I was younger. I had one of the ones where you pumped it down and it would give hair. you, like, spaghetti. Yeah. Oh, I have that So well. good. Yeah. <laughs> So look, this is done, and it's just, that was super easy, you know, yeah. you just put it in, and then all we've done is like smooth it out so that you get a nice even layer, and then let's go in with the rest Back of this. this. Um, so just sprinkling it all over yeah, again. Yeah, I mean, the, the sprinkling thing there is, it's not just for no reason. Um, Can I do it It's as well? just to even it out, really. And what this would sort of typically be in the Middle East is like, a, you know, your coffee snack in the afternoon. So you've got spices in this lovely mixture, spices in the centre. Yes. And that's kind of what I love about cooking with spices, is just a little goes such a long way. Yeah, you're right. It's so nice, the two textures, like the crusty crust. The crusty crust <laughs> and the squidgy <laughs> filling. The crusty crust and the squidgy, <laughs> squidgy <laughs> filling. Crusty McCrusterson. We're, like, we're like really good food writers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> with explanations like this, we conquer the world. There we go, and that is it. So what temperature do you need to bake this on? Um, about 180 for about 30 to 35 minutes. This is me being like heat through an oven. <laughs> <laughs> so you want it golden on the top and bottom and lovely and squidgy in the middle. And that is it. Let's go. Let's bake mm. it. Let's bake it. Then we can eat it. Yeah. Bake. Yeah. You see it's gone all golden Ooh. and glorious. It looks amazing. And like this is this is where, you know, I love a bit of food mess. So just some honey, some crunchy pistachio nuts. Oh, I love pistachios, I think they're my favourite nuts. Aren't they amazing? Yeah. And then here, some like ground walnuts. So again, it's that sort oh, of yes. you know, that sort of inside out flavour. Mm. And then lastly, because you know, spices are my thing, a lovely it's little spice. isn't it? Little pinch from high up of cinnamon. When you do it from a height, it always makes it even more impressive, doesn't it? <laughs> Salt it's like raining so cinnamon. fancy. <laughs> that looks weird. Look at the thing. In the... <laughs> so look, and it just it just looks so beautiful. And this, listen to the crunch. Oh, oh you can't I beat that. That it. sound. Now I'm just going to turn it round because what I want are like little, you know, like little squares. So like lovely little pastry squares. Yes. What I want to do, I want to give you the ultimate piece because I think... You are good to me. I think it's the middle bit is the best. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, oh look, oh, yes. Look at that, it's that lovely squidgy layer. Oh, thank oh. you. Oh, I'm, go well. I'm, I'm really feeling hungry I literally, now. my mouth is watering. Yeah. <laughs> we do it together. Okay, cheers. We? Cheers. Go. Oh, John. Mm -hmm. Spice King right here. I'm glad you're happy. Not worthy, I'm not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I really could eat all of those in one go. Next up, I'm in central London to learn the secret behind perfectly spiced Lebanese cooking. From cinnamon to nutmeg and beyond, I love using spices in my bakes. And today I'm in bustling Covent Garden to find out how spice is done Lebanese style. bakery opened in central London three years ago and has gone from strength to strength. They know a thing or two about spices and today I'm going to see if I can pick up a few tips. Born and raised in Beirut, head chef Stefan has made a special trip all the way from his Hello, homeland Stefan. just Good to, to meet you. me today. To see you too. What gave you the idea to bring Lebanese baking to the UK? 
I want to share with the British community our taste and our culture. It's the best way to share it within the food. The Lebanese food is a mixture of different culture. So we have the influence of the Phoenicians, traders, who brought some uh, different type of spices from around the Mediterranean. How did you start baking? Who taught you how to bake? My grandma preparing the manoushi at home on the, on the stove. And then later on in my life, I've been in the kitchen all, all throughout the years. Then I decided that it's good to go back to the nostalgic feeling. And what does manoushi mean? Okay, manoushi, it's a flat bread with different toppings. This is a modern take. It's a hummus manoushi with, with the topping. Roasted beetroot, roasted pine nuts, uh, the cumin spice, and a drizzle of olive oil. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to do this. There's no attractive way to do this, is there? The flatbread. Yes. It's, um, again, it's really light. Yeah, the bread is prepared on a daily basis. Then it's stored in the fridge for a couple of hours to be rested to allow the gluten to develop and give it this texture. It's really tasty. Can I have another bit? <laughs> it's really good. Mm. I'm going to show you now how we prepare our mixes and spices to be added later on to our manoushi. It smells incredible down here. I'm really catching cinnamon and cloves. It smells amazing. Yeah, I have prepared uh, the most used and famous spices in the Lebanese cuisine. I would like you to sniff my pot. <laughs> so, uh, and, and guess what's in it? It's not going to be like chilli and blow, no, my, no. blow my head off. Not at all. You've tried it. Mm. Is this no, the sumac? It. That's it. Mm. It's quite, it's quite no. bitter. Yeah. Um, is this cinnamon? No. No. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> I can't identify it, I have to admit. It's called sweet uh, black pepper. It's really flowery. Is it cardamom? That's it. It's the strongest among all the others. And now I'm going to show you how we prepare a manoushi and you are going to bake it. OK, you trust me with this? Yeah, sure. OK. I'm going to be by your side. OK. So that's the dough, the base of the manoushi. OK, we put za'atar and, and oil on the dough. So this is called za'atar? Yeah, this is called za'atar manoushi or manoushi za'atar. The za'atar mix is prepared with three main ingredients, the sumac, the thyme flour, and uh, toast sesame seeds. OK, so we spread the mix on the dough. Uh, there's a rumor in the Lebanese culture that the za'atar makes the children smarter in schools. Oh, really? Yeah. There's so, hope for me then. It might make me smarter. <laughs> <laughs> now, we slide it in the oven. You've done that before? Yeah, <laughs> all the time. And now you will see that some pocket in the dough will grow, so we have to prick it with, with a special tool in order to have it all the same cooked base. Oh, I see. OK, as you can oh, see look. now, we prick it. Wow! That's, that actually looks really fun to do. Yeah, so we are pricking the... So you're just the... constantly pricking it the whole yeah, time? Yeah, exactly. Can I have a go? Of course. Thank you. Go ahead. That's it. Just and now, bursting all the bubbles. Flip it, flip it. Yeah. Down like this? Uh, exactly. And push it toward the, the, the fire, so you have an even yes. colour from, from the borders of the manoushi. OK? And now you have to take it out of the oven. Okay. I'll take I'll this tool this. from you. And then you take this. Yeah. OK, you slide it under the dough and you take it out. That's it. Put it on there? Yes. So the secret of, the, of a good manoushi is to have a golden colour on the edges and a golden colour from the bottom side. That looks perfect. It okay. smells delicious. So we add tomato, OK, like this. Cucumbers. Few mint leaves. And a little bit of black olives. And then we roll it like this Ooh. as a sandwich. And that's the best way to eat 
Oh, the wow, also. thank you. Enjoy it. I think that's one of the best things I've eaten for a long time. That, that spice combination, the flavours with the sumac and the sesame and the thyme, that is the most perfect spice combination out there, yeah, I think. Yeah. Great teamwork. Thank you. Enjoy it. Thank you. All for me. Everyone loves a bit of pav, or should I say pavlova and give it its full name. And it's normally considered quite a summery dessert, but I've switched it up. I'm making a lovely spiced version, perfect for a winter pudding. So that's all ready, so I can make a lovely circle of meringue. I'm gonna pop my egg whites into the mixer. And a pinch of salt. So I'm using some light muscovado, one of my favourite ingredients, but just that on its own is a bit too heavy for meringue, so I'm going to make it 50-50, golden caster sugar and light muscovado. Mix it through. Just going to whisk these up till they reach a really nice stiff pea consistency. Last bit going in. So look at that, stiff and glossy. So I've got some lovely vanilla extract. And then that first hit of spice, some warming cinnamon. I just love the smell of cinnamon, it's so homely. So that's done. That's a stiff peak if ever I saw one. Time to spoon it onto my tray. You can see I have my circle here, but I want to turn it over so the lead doesn't come out onto the meringue. Use the excess here just to pop that on. It's gonna hold my paper in place so it doesn't slide about. Look at my stiff meringue. It's lovely because it really does hold its shape. Look at that. Right, I'm just going to flatten it down. Seems a shame to ruin this lovely peaky creation, but it's got to be a pavlova, not a meringue mountain. So just push it down. So I just use the spoon to start creating the well. Push the meringue towards the edge of the circle, ready to hold all of the gorgeous fruit and cream. And then just using my spoon, just like to give it a few flicks. Because meringue looks lovely with a flick. So that's all done, all finished. That brown sugar meringue is really the perfect vessel for the cinnamon. It's gonna be warm and wintry. So I'm gonna pop it in the oven at 140 degrees for 20 minutes, then turn the heat down to 120 and cook it on for a further hour and 10 minutes. Once that's cooked, leave it in the oven to cool completely. Now, on to my filling. I'm using eating apple rather than cooking apple because I want it to hold its shape. And there's just loads of apples and pears around at this time of year, so it's a really perfect pudding to make. I'm leaving the skin on the pears because it's really, really thin skin. When I griddle it, you won't even notice it. It adds a nice little bit of colour variation. I'm going to add some melted butter and just sprinkle over some golden caster sugar. And then finally, Two of my favourite spices, hard to choose, but I've got some lovely ground ginger and some cinnamon. Coat all of the fruit pieces so that every surface is covered in sugary spice. I've got a griddle pan over here. It's nice and hot. And what I'm going for is to caramelise the fruit pieces so you get those lovely griddle marks. So you just place them in. It only takes a few minutes each side. 
Oh, there you go. And just give them all a turn. They're ready. So I'm just going to continue here cooking these in batches until all of the fruit is cooked, leave it to soften and cool down, and then it's time to assemble. It's time to construct the pavlova. If you want to do this and it's going to be sitting there for a couple of hours, sometimes the meringue can go a bit soggy, so a top tip, brush the meringue shell with some cooled melted white chocolate. You won't see it and that will create a barrier just to give you some time. I've got some lovely thick double cream, just going to pour that into my stand mixer. And I'm just going to sweeten it with a tiny bit of icing sugar, just a couple of tablespoons. What you want to be careful with when you're whipping up double cream is to not overdo it. It only takes a couple of seconds and if it goes too far, it can look a bit cottage cheesy. It doesn't take long, just a minute or so. So look, it's really thick. I'm now going to add in a slosh of vanilla bean paste and then just for another hit of warm spice, the syrup from a jar of stem ginger. One last mix. There. A couple of gentle whisks and that's it. Look at that. Gorgeous, thick and creamy, nice and light. just smooth it over the top. The pavlova was actually created for Anna Pavlova, who was a famous ballerina in the 1920s after she visited Australia and New Zealand. And they created lots of dishes for her, including an ice cream. But the one I like the sound of best is a frog's legs dish. I can just imagine a little frog in a, in a tutu. I'd love to wear a tutu while I make this. That would be Perfect for me. I love dressing up. You don't need to know about that though, do you? <laughs> so it's time to pile it up high with the spicy fruit. It's all about the drama. So that looks pretty incredible already, but for the final flourish, I'm going to add some lovely dark chocolate just splattered all over the meringue, the cream and the lovely fruit. It's gorgeous. That'll do. And for a final flourish, a little pop of colour, I'm just going to dot over some red currants, like little jewels, just to make them look pretty and brighten up a winter's day. Step away, I think that is complete. Would you look at that? Pav is not just for summer, no way. That is a delicious and spectacular dessert that will grace your table at any time of year. And there ends my chapter on baking with spices. My pumpkin pie, taken to another level with a delicious meringue topping. The perfect pairing, chilli and chocolate brownie cookies. John Gregory Smith's Middle Eastern date and cinnamon squares. And the star of the show, my winter spiced apple and pear pavlova. Delicious.